Good afternoon and welcome to another Live with Lisa. Today's guest, all the way from Homer, Michigan, the lovely, Miss talented Linda Hershka. Her husband's here too, but he don't count. <laughs> Scotty Rockbass. Come on, Scott, get in the picture. Come on over. So what are you buddies. doing today, Nick? How are you? Good. I Good heard that the you. ladies are going to do some quilting. I don't know. We're going fishing, right? That's what we always do. I, oh, well, I catch the fish. You don't. I drive the boat. You drive the boat. I catch the fish. That's how it works, right? That's right. Perfect. Should we let them come in now? I don't think they're really interested in the ladies. Though. Maybe they want. To, maybe they want you two to talk more about what it's like to be uh, married to a quilter. <laughs> well, it's actually pretty easy because I tell her what to do and she just does it. <laughs> Is that how it works? Yeah, I don't get away with that. Uh, it's a good thing they're not here to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think they took the canoe out and went went for a little uh, That's joy right. ride. That's right. It's kind of hard living with a quilter because we always have to talk them down off the ledge, you know, calm them down, show them what to do, yeah, give you, them inspiration. You know, the best part of it, though, is they're never around, yeah. you know? Well, they're around. I hear. I hear Linda a lot. No, those those are the cats. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Exactly. You know, I Jax and I just hang out, and he sits on my lap, and mm -hmm. you know, and at the end of the night, Lisa walks down the steps, and then, usually when I'm getting up for work, she's just going to bed. So right. We pass by and say right. hello. And is it a hello or is it? It's good night. Good night. Goodbye. Nothing else. Yeah. Go to work. Yeah. Get out. Of, get out of the way. I'm going to bed now. That's right. What do you know? It's just like that. Just like that. It's exactly <laughs> like that. Well, anyway, I'm Nick. This is Scott. We're the other halves of the the talented uh, ladies. So let's bring them on. Here's Lisa and Linda. Thank you. How come no one clapped for us? Yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to a word they the say. Life know, roadie, right? Nick, the life they of just roadie. love it, so they yeah. can do whatever they want to do when we're doing what we're doing, right? Yes. It right. affords them being able to fish. <laughs> <laughs> and put uh, primitive gatherings or the, the, quilted, the quilted pineapple, pineapple on their on boat. The boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. He's a paid, I'm a pay, paying sponsor right, for that. Right. I'm, I'm so. like, why do you want primitive gatherings on your boat? Yeah. So, anyways, makes them look yeah. legit. So yeah, this is fun. I'm in Lisa's brand new facility. The Gatherings is the retreat house here. I haven't, this is my first time here. So what, when I was know, it done last year? it took us year? long enough to get your butt here. I know, it was hard. It's, it's been, it's been crazy, crazy couple years, but I haven't been here in two years. So she was just starting, just kind of starting things two years ago when I was here. So I'm here and I'm actually teaching two two-day workshops so four days so we're just finishing up the second day we're on lunch right now so it's exciting yeah and they were just fun. telling me how much they're learning and how much fun they're having and uh, uh we're talking about advanced classes so yeah they can coming come back. back yeah yeah coming so back a, maybe a couple a good time. times a year yeah. yeah it's close it's like a six, we i live in michigan so it's about a six hour drive it's not bad right um, right just long enough so yeah i think we should have you come back like twice a year yeah, like this time about. and maybe springtime and then yeah like do a spring and fall mm -hmm. kind of a thing yeah so they can either summer brush up because they can't I, I I couldn't possibly imagine that all of this sinks in at one time like I would think that you'd have to learn a little bit go home and practice it implement it use yeah. it learn from it and then come that's back and learn more kind of that, Is that, that how it goes? yeah that I would say that's kind of the idea they leave with a ton of inspiration and arrive back with more questions when they come by come back but yeah a ton of inspiration to utilize the designs the mm -hmm. concepts uh the method that i use to pick designs and things for quilts um we go over all that it's mm -hmm. pretty exciting lots of ruler work all right especially on the second day so i just want to just back pedal a little bit so if you have any questions for linda mm -hmm. linda is a award-winning master custom quilter all right, so if you don't know that, this is one of the quilts that just came back yep, just home. just came back. I don't know if you can get a good shot at it, Kaylee. Yeah, can can you get a, the guy's got us in here nice and close. Yes. But this Tight. is all custom quilted on one of my designs from last year's summer block of the week. 
Flannel, flannel with wool, applique, flannel back. So flannel Linda back. dreams up all these applications of feathers and arcs and curves and, uh, you know, and she has an array of tools to help her accomplish all that. So she's a very prolific businesswoman. So when you become, when, when your passion becomes your business, it's yes. really, uh, it's not always easy. It's not always no. easy. It's hard to step away from it. And no. when you're in, and I know that we're very similar in our yes. worth ec work ethic. Epic. Work and work and more work. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, Lisa was talking to me about my day. Our days look very, I right. mean, we come back home even if we leave our studio because my studio's there. So it's very hard not to, Separate, in the evenings, yeah. to not go back in there and get an edge on your next day work that you have to do and get some work done, especially if, you know, both of us don't, we no longer have children at home really. So, right. It's so if do. you have some questions about anything today, mm -hmm. just leave them in the comment section. <clears throat> we do, we will, we, the girls will pick out some good questions and we'll, they'll um, ask us them. And then uh, Linda has some very, very nice prizes for you. Yes. So let's talk I, about that before we get okay. Keep going so on. I before we go on and we talk about a little bit about the quilting, I am giving away two very large prizes. I'm giving away a whole sorry if I went over the microphone a whole set of my flex templates rulers that I used a ton of them, like probably almost every one on this quilt and a set of brand new. They're called my mid curves. So if you're familiar at all with my templates and rulers, I have the original six um, that I came out with, and then I had big curves. And then I had the flax, which is a much different shape. It's a sharper curve, but um, these are sizes in between uh, the original and the big curves. So they're the middle ones, the mid curves. So they're like, the numbers would be a 24, 26, and 28. My big curves are like 30 on up and the original six were like a BFF eight size up to a 20. So they're in between. These are not available yet. They'll be going on the website uh, soon. This is the first place my students are seeing them and I'm actually giving away a set of those. There's three of them and I use them um, throughout this quilt as well. So. so and we'll go over some of your other rulers too, but these are the yeah. ones that she's giving away for you yep. guys today. So that is super cool. That is very nice. Yes. And let me just point out that even if you don't own a long arm, you mm -hmm. can still learn how to machine quilt and use these rulers on your domestic machine as well. Yep. Or maybe it's your sit down that you move or yep. like they if all you have are adaptable, down. right? Mm -hmm. Yep, they all work for both. You just need to make sure that you're using the ruler foot for your machine, um, just so your hopping foot doesn't hop on the acrylic. Uh, and because you don't want that but uh yep they work on domestic sit down long arm you know like the mid arm as well as your long arm they work for both right. they're awesome so one of the questions i want to ask linda is what do you think can you like explain to us what it took to get where you're at <laughs> i know that's a that. hard <laughs> question but so you know um a lot of time um, on the machine, a lot of practice. Um, that's one of the biggest things uh, when I was researching long arms or talking to them. You know, basically, I, I wasn't sure if I got the most honest answer all the time, you know, looking at machines, but um, Jamie Wallen, who sold me my first A1 and was kind of like a mentor, definitely is a mentor for me um, in the long arm definitely quilting and a friend of mine and he was like be prepared to suck for a while <laughs> um were his exact words and but it's true i spent hours because he said the biggest drawback is people get it they don't realize you know how you really have to practice and um they kind of walk away from it so scott can attest i spent when the kids went to bed at night i was down there for hours just practicing getting to know my machine um and i would say that i have definitely spent tens of thousands of hours at this point right I mean, and i think you got to be determined right yes you have to want to do that you have to enjoy it i think 
and and I think Lisa and I are very lucky that we do something that we are very passionate about and and love. So you have to love it, even with every quilt, even on my worst down days. Um, it's still my best days. Right. You can't <laughs> just be half in. I think. No, you're yeah. all in. Yeah, yeah, I'm all in in yeah. anything that I do. <laughs> but Lisa, you know, it's definitely practicing. Uh, I look back, like when I was in my local guild, and my girlfriend Patty, who's also a quilter and was very influential, kind of helped. Um, you know, get my foot in the door with Lisa. She's the one when I went to a retreat originally in Wisconsin in 2011. And uh, we went and our other friend Kathy was with us and Patty was like, well, you know, Linda's a long arm quilter and I had only, I'd been quilting for far less than a year. And, and she's like, really? I want to see her work and everything. So Patty really opened up the door for me. Yeah, to, Patty, Patty, yes. you wouldn't have said a word, but Patty I wouldn't like, have said a word. Patty's I'm like, very, hey, Linda's a long arm Yeah, you should look good. at Linda's stuff. Like, okay, pretty good. okay, yeah. So that's how that started out. But um, I didn't even remember where I was going with that, but where we were working and how we started. But, oh, yeah. Patty would say, like, when we were at Guild, she's like, I remember always looking over at you when we, we would have a guest speaker or somebody, and she's like, you were always doodling designs. You were always looking around for inspiration and, and writing things down. And I think that's really kind of sums it up. It's on my mind all the time. Paying I'm attention. walking my dog and, and thinking of quilt designs <laughs> in the air. Um, so I'm a prolific walker, and everyone in our little hometown of Homer always sees Tess and I, but I'm always walking and thinking of things or thinking of quilting, going to bed thinking of quilting. It just really, it's all things quilty. <laughs> right, right. And basically, I think, as women in this type of business, it is your life. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's really hard because sometimes I think people don't value that our business is a legit business, yes. right? And uh, sometimes yes. it takes a lot to, you know, it takes building buildings like this for people to yeah. say, oh yeah. To give you Yeah, she must be size. doing really good. Because when I saw this place, you guys, it's awesome. And I told Lisa, <laughs> I was, look at, look at what you built. Yeah. I was like, look at how amazing it is. And, and, and as women, I always, you know, I'm Lisa's biggest fan and she's the hardest working woman I know. And um, I, I always I, say that. I was like, look at what you built. I was like, in, we live in a world where sometimes you, you know, I know. <laughs> I mean, just thinking that time, I think about when I bought my, my truck and I wrote that check and there were four guys on the other side of the desk and Scott's like, no, this is her truck and I wrote that check for it and I was like no and he they're like what do you do and I'm like I'm a quilter <laughs> I saved my no, life but I'm a quilter and I bought you know was yeah. able to write that check myself right right you know? right right and we just when you love what you do it's mm -hmm. just so you're just so impassionated in it and it, it just but one of the things that I think I'm good at is I think I'm good at hey you can do what okay here you go mm -hmm. like I don't yes. worry about you know whether like I don't I didn't ask for your resume I didn't I'm like no. here you go and Lisa do still it. does she sends yeah. me things and she's like you know what to do yeah I don't tell her what to do I don't mm -hmm. and I love helping somebody else achieve their goals mm -hmm. as well yep. or like I'll say to you like what's left on your bucket list to do like mm -hmm. what else do you want to accomplish and mm -hmm. when I can make mm -hmm. a quilt like this and send it off to her mm -hmm. and then it comes back like this I mean I could mm -hmm. never do this I mean mm -hmm. I'd rather start working on the next quilt and together mm -hmm. we can create this mm -hmm. and it doesn't bother me one bit that I didn't do every bit of it but because I love that we share mm -hmm. this yes and we have a pretty good history of some winning quilts in Paducah yes. matter and of fact road I to still California road to uh, California Grand Rapids AQS mm -hmm. too yeah I yeah. always forget to I always forget to submit quilts or yeah I'm like, I'm like uh, I'm like oh yeah I, because we're it's not, not, we're not on making, the top of our list. No, it's not. Now we're that just, you have your, yeah. you know, you've been, yeah. people know you, it's nice that we don't have to do that anymore. No, we don't. Right, because no. to me, if you We're just make, trying to make a deadline. If you, yeah, if you make my <laughs> quilt and you take it to your local fair or, or uh, quilt guild or whatever and you win, that makes me very happy. Much more than when I win. But, it's pretty know, cool when we win. It is fun. When, it's cool. We were not planning on it. We're just trying to get it done, get a deadline, get it photographed. And then they're I'm like, oh, well, this might be good enough for a show. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, it turned out pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do want to uh, say something before I forget because, you know, sometimes those little itty-bitty things mm -hmm. pop up. 
So I did something new on this quilt that I've never done before. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I was trying to do that little flange binding, you know, that little bit of fabric like inside here that sticks out. And I, I did it on the quilt that I sent off to Kimberly Jolly for her fundraiser because I, I always like to try something new. And it was okay. It wasn't perfect. But on something like this, I wanted to do it, but I didn't want it not to be perfect. So I thought, well, what can I do if I really can't do that? So what I did was I took a thicker weighted pearl cotton and I stem stitched the flange in here. So hopefully, I think I'm the first one to do that, but that's a cool little alternative to add a little bit more excitement to your yeah. quilt mm -hmm. that makes the judge go, oh look, mm -hmm. look at that. You can't see it from far away, but when you get your nose up to it and you're looking at this quilting and the embellishment and you see that line of stem stitching, mm -hmm. it's just one more thing to catch their eye. And if yeah. you ever want to win at a quilt show, you have to make the judge pause and stop mm -hmm. and look. And when they do that, you get rewarded for that because they're like, oh, this is different. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's nice mm -hmm. to come up with some of those things because I can't do something else. I ended up coming up with something I could do. Yeah. And it only took me four hours to do that. <laughs> yeah, you know? she sent me a picture. I was like, I can't. I, I saw what she's doing, but it was hard to see until, I got, so until I got up yeah. got up here yeah. and, and saw it. And I love it. Yeah, so I like that it's a uh, contrasting thread, too. It's really pretty. Right. OK, so does anybody have any questions so far? You got any for me? All right, here we I'm go. Look at, okay. All right. How do you get over the fear of ruining a quilt when you first start? This is perfect. This question. is perfect because I have ruined a quilt or two. No, <laughs> I haven't. I haven't ruined them, but I have done things to Lisa's quilts over the years. So um, there's a quilt. Should we uh, have the guy show it? Yeah. Um, are they here? Yeah, I don't they're know if right they're over here. there. Oh, okay. Come and show um, this red and green quilt. For yeah, us. you can show. So here I have the very first quilt I ever did for Lisa. Um, it's not the first quilt that she sent me home, but it's the first quilt that I ever quilted for and there was no pressure It was giant. Um, it was for Lisa who was like one of my quilt idols, you know before I met her I was making lots of her patterns and designs and um, She told me she was gonna submit it to Fonz and Porter so magazine so there was no pressure at all So it was this beautiful beautiful Quilt you ready for and it? maybe you could yeah. do it over here and yeah, Kaylee yeah. can pan over yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it up. And then we got some rookies on the job here. Yeah. It's okay. We'll get you through this, guys. Okay. So here it is. It's, I don't know, I think it's like 90 by 90 or something close to it. It's beautiful. It's giant applique. It's the very first quilt I ever did for Lisa, and I ripped it, you guys. I actually had a pin in there, which I never pin based or put pins in my quilts like, it, like that anymore, and I didn't realize it was in there, and it got caught, and it ripped it on the edge. And thank, thankfully... The binding she was able to cut it and, and bind it but it, it ripped it for like an inch of it and i i did need um i almost needed therapy but i was scott found me in the fetal position laying on the floor underneath my machine when i did it um and it, it all worked out i mean I, I was fortunate if it would have been in the middle middle of the quilt we might have had to do some like um yeah i'm just like know, cut it off creative yeah she's <laughs> like cut it off Oh, I think I've gotten a marker to uh, nail polish on it before that I had to remove. So my fear of uh, ruining quilts is I'm like, we'll figure it out and we'll get past yeah, it. Yeah, there's we always have to something. put a label or a new little piece of applique on something. But it, yeah, it's not the worst thing. It happens. I never. It happens. But I do understand every new quilt is like your first day at a new job because it's a new quilt and you got to do something different. But I once I get I, I don't worry about it anymore. I'm like, that's not true. You should hear what she says when she gets them back. <laughs> Go away, Nick. She's like, I love it. That's what she says. <laughs> yes, I'm like, so I, I run out of words to describe. Yeah, if the, Lisa texts me and she's like, I love it. It's beautiful. I know that it's phenomenal. That yeah. that is. Because I'm like, I don't know what to adjectives. say because it's so awesome. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I, I feel like I got to come up with. You know, they always get better and better and better. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard for me to be like knocked off my. You know, but it always happens. It always happens. How many hours did you spend on the quilt behind you? So this quilt took a little while. I had to get back. I, um, you know, I, this was a tough year. 
um, just for lots of reasons. But it was, so I would work on it and I would kind of step away from it and work on it again. So there's about a hundred hours into this quilt. Yeah, there's a lot of applique that I ditched around. Um, there's a lot of quilting, a lot of dense quilting on it. So in total, it was about a hundred hours on this quilt. Are you self-taught? Pretty much, yeah. for the most part. I've never gone, other than the beginning um, when I learned to use my machine and did some training with Jamie Wallen, who helps me tremendously uh, as far as having the confidence um, to you know, quilt and, and have the tools to be able to do it on my own. Uh, other than that, that was it. I mean, it was in the early stages of YouTube, wasn't really, uh, blogs were really the most popular thing out there. Mm -hmm. um, I really tried not to watch too much of what I, I wanted to have. You wanted my to own. develop your own style. Yes, I knew that after um, working with Jamie, I knew that we had two very different styles um, and that that was kind of my own thumbprint or fingerprint. I mean, I was inspired by people that were out there at, at the time. I think Karen McTavish was a big inspiration, Judy Madsen from Green Fairy Quilts. Um, you know, I think I reached out to her early on and, and I love her work. I'm a huge fan of both of their work and Jamie's. Um, but you definitely want to, I wanted to develop kind of my own style. So for the most part, yes, self-taught, just working in my basement. I live in a little tiny town called Homer. I'm not close to like a big city to go to like a lot of shows and, and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, one of the things I saw yesterday is Linda had a lot of little quilts or mm -hmm. blocks left over from quilts that she would practice and yes. quilt on. So mm -hmm. she was practicing on real patchwork. Mm -hmm. I think you can only get so far on whole cloth quilts. So or, yeah, the one know. thing I always recommend to students or to people that I mean, I tell them that I don't quilt on muslin. I don't want to try things out on muslin because that isn't the real world for me unless I'm working on a whole cloth. I want to work on a quilt that has seams, that has, you know, they're not perfect, whatever. I want to see how things look on that. So when I was starting out, yes, I made lots of different different samples with different battings, um, trying things out like how my stitches looked and... And, and I think so, it was yeah. genius that you use those little quilts to mm -hmm. test all your thoughts yeah. and your theories on what's going to work yeah, and what, what's going to look What back. double batting look good, what, flannel What's going to pop out. Yes. Yeah. How it's yeah. going to work. It, you know, I just... I mean, there she there. must have had 30 little, little quilts. I mean, just yeah, all, yeah. all quilts all, that all I had sorts pieced, of things. Or if I decided she... I didn't like a block of the month, or I wasn't going to finish it, and I just decided to make those into little little projects instead. So, do you freehand or use rulers more? Um, I do both, very. Um, but I rely heavily on my rulers. I use ruler work on every single quilt that I do. Every quilt that I do for Lisa, you can see, it makes me look like a much better quilter than I probably am, I would say. Um, it really helps me with the design process. So I, I would say it's equal, but I, I would say that my go-to is rulers always, always. Okay. And then what rulers would you recommend for beginners? So the beginner set um, for me is my OG, the original six, um, is 80% of your quilt box that's available on my website, thequiltedpineapple.com. Um, I have them over there. I don't yeah. have them right here, but we use them. They're on all the tables for all my students to use as well. Uh, I always recommend that as a wonderful beginning set and um, my set of my three straight edge rulers. There's like an 18, a 12, and a five inch um, ruler in that set. And there's like a bundle that has the two that will like complete basically, here's a brand new set. So there's like six different sizes. It really gets you through 80% of your needs. Um, and I used these for years and years. I even had them for a few years before I ever made them. I think Lisa remembers, you know, I really ha I have this idea and it took, it took, I like literally slept and thought about them every single night, like how I was going to make them, like what were my favorite sizes. Anyways, um, and so it was the original nice that six. you uh, kind of lived with the guy that helped you make them, right? Yes, so Scott <laughs> makes them all for me. I was like, when I was thinking of ideas and wanting to expand and things like that, I told my husband, I said, we're gonna buy the software, the equipment, everything. I was like, and you're gonna learn how to do this. So he is by nature, He's a, a, he works for the Michigan State Police as a state trooper, actually. He's a lieutenant and he works in the forensics lab now. So he doesn't work on the road, you won't ever see him. He hasn't been on the road for, I think, 
25 years maybe. Um, but he, that is not his background, is, is not doing that. So um, he actually, his degree is in zoology. He wanted to be a veterinarian and work with animals is what really his passion is. But he ended up using the science in another way. So anyways, um, but he makes them now. For me, makes them for other quilters, really good rulers that I use their rulers yep. as well. Makes and our so rulers at Primitive Gathering. Makes them for mm -hmm. Lisa, the piecing piecing as well as long arm rulers for mm -hmm. a number of other quilters that are awesome. Um, but that is my recommendation is that, and then you can graduate up to the to other sets. Yep. So. All right. Next question. What is your least favorite part about long arming? So my least favorite part, picking out, Scott says. <laughs> Ripping out stitches, I don't uh, particularly enjoy. I don't do it very often, but I'm a perfectionist, and if I don't think something looks nice, I will pick it out of flannel, I pick it out of everything. I pick it out of wool. When I tell Lisa I'm picking out, it makes her panic, but I'm like, <laughs> trust me. Like, That's probably my least favorite, and personally for me, and it, I'm, it, it makes, warms my heart that Lisa says that every quilt looks better. I don't yeah. really know if it does, but, for me, because I want to always outdo myself, so that's my own personal challenge. I have to get over that mental hump of maybe every quilt isn't going to be wildflower gatherings or my Portland Rose, which is my all-time favorite quilt, my, you know, my Michael Jackson's Thriller, the best, you know, greatest album, <laughs> you know, or whatever, it, you know, best-selling album. It's uh, that every quilt isn't going to be that and that's okay and lisa sometimes tells me that when she sends me something she's like look this isn't going to go to a show i was like we say that about every quilt but <laughs> um so that for mentally i would say that that would probably be my biggest drawback just for my own personal not just getting in there and doing what i do best and not getting over that mental that i have to beat the last quilt okay um a couple more questions what is the best way to learn custom quilting? So the best way to learn custom quilting is just to do it. Yeah. Just do it, get on your machine, and just start practicing. Draw your designs out. Think of something because your brain isn't gonna be able to do it. If you can't, I'm a much better quilter than I am a drawing artist, but if I can't draw it, then I can't quilt it. Because just like you know, when you first learned to write your name, your signature, you had to really think about doing it. Now you can write your signature on that check or whatever without even thinking about it. Quilting is like that for me because I can quilt feathers upside down backwards with my eyes closed in the complete dark and, and know what I'm doing. It's just, I don't even think about it and do it. So you just have to keep at it and practice. Draw, doodle, whatever you can, and then just go to your machine and start doing it. You just these have to are, jump in. These are in. all good questions. These are yeah. all great questions. I couldn't think of better ones. Um, practice, practice, and practice, patience. practice. Lots All right, of, I think I've gotten through be, most of them. Okay, so that's awesome. So I just wanted to say on this quilt, like take. Um, so on this quilt, I primarily used my new my flex, which are you. So people always want to ask me. So you can see that these are a much softer curve. So and I want something that's a little curvy, but more than a straight line for curved cross hatching. Um, I'm gonna choose my original six. If I want something that's more of a deeper curve, a swag, an arch, um, I'm gonna choose my flex templates. So on here, if you guys look closer, um, this, I'm using a, my size E for up here, and then, excuse me, E is going down here, and then another one's going there because it's a little bit different shape applique. It's coming in, it's a little bit wider. So I had to use two different sizes um, to get that curve to go around it. If I want the curve to be really close to the applique, I'm gonna pick um, one of the more um, narrower curves. If I want it to be a little bit, you know, have more room, then I'm going to pick one of the softer curves. Um, out here in the these swags out here you can see like this is kind of a flatter line this is more of a curved line so that's my new my new templates are coming in there and they're that softer line that's going around it but I didn't want so um like my big curves could have worked there but it would have been almost a flat line and um, my other curves I didn't want too big of a curve I really wanted those to look like a swag that was hanging down around there so with that I mix and match 
um, my templates, and I'm also using the so original. So, are you sets. marking with these rulers? Or are you just laying it down so and using I it? So, I do a fair amount of marking. I like the purple air erasable marker. The Dritz is my favorite to mark on light fabrics because it, for the most part, disappears. If I need something to last a little bit longer, I might use the blue line pen just to have it hold still for a little bit. So, I'll mark them a little bit, and then I use them to quilt. So, I use them to quilt and mark. We've got a lot of sense. really good questions here. Okay. okay. So what's the batting in the quilt behind you? Okay. So this is, um, on this one, it is 70-30 Quilter's Dream with a layer of wool over the top. So two battings. Layer. And then what is your favorite Pops thread wool. to use and what type was used on this? Okay. So So Fine 50 Weight was used on this. Uh, all throughout the quilt. So I think it's color 402, I think is like a light cream. It's not the lighter, it was like the in-between. So it, this might be a hair darker actually than ivory, but the other one was just a hair lighter and I thought the whiter thread didn't look as nice. Um, and then around and in the appliques, on some of the appliques I've quilted because they need, um, just to be quilted stitched down and it adds a lot of personality and texture to the quilt. So I use monofilament thread. I like the YLI. It's a nylon thread, but it's very durable. It's very heat resistant. You could also use the Aurifil. That has a little bit more sheen to it. Not bad, but I really like the Y letters, YLI, Whisper Touch. Um, I think it says it's 40. It's on my website too. I, I sell that one on my website too. So I use um, just those two threads on all this. All right, so there's, like I said, almost all a 50 these... weight so fine is my favorite to use on custom quilting as well as the monofilament. If I'm running an edge to edge, then I tend to use a heavier weight, like a 40 weight um, in of a thread, in of a tack on my edge to edge quilt. And how and why do you choose your battings? So I just choose basically on the type of loft that I want. So I knew that this was going, I'm was going to quilt a lot on this, but I really wanted some of those feather motifs, um, to stand out and kind of give a trapunto effect. So I picked the wool of that. Some of my favorites is Quilter's Dream 70, 30 and Hobbs 80, 20 over the top. I put that in a ton of Lisa's quilts too. Okay. Um, do you have any new rulers in the works? Yes. So the mid curves are the newest ones and those will be on the website here in the next couple of weeks. So. Where are your classes available? So that, this is the first classes, the workshops that I've uh, taught um, because COVID uh, canceled. Um, so we'll be looking at probably next year coming here, probably a couple times next year. This will probably be, um, I might travel a little bit more than that, but this will probably be my main stop just because it's so convenient um, for travel. Traveling's hard to go across the country and take, I like to drive and take all my stuff because I don't want to be without anything. I want to have all my stuff so I don't have to worry about anything. And I pack everything but the kitchen sink in the truck. And so um, that's why this works out so well. Do you have any books? I don't have books, but I have a DVD. I have, it's a DVD set, there's three DVDs as well as there's this, a fourth disc on there called a slider disc and basically that's a printable uh, disc with all the designs on it. The DVD is available to purchase in the hard disc as well as you can buy an online version that you would have in your account to view your videos on my website as well. So okay, so that, that. kind of goes along with this next This question. is basically like the two-day workshop. Yeah. Do your DVDs. rulers include instructions? So would that be instructions for your rulers? Yes, yeah, so the rulers don't include exact instructions just because it, you have a, a world of ideas that you can do with them, and people are using them in so many different ways. Like I have hand quilters. Lisa's used a couple of the sizes to create scallop swags, borders. scallop borders. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want to put them only in a slot with rulers, but I post on social media lots of things. There are, we have YouTube that features the rulers, uh, mine, the lives, um, videos, um, there's lots out there to see how to use them. And I post tons of um, things on social media. I have over the years, um, steps on how to use them. All right, okay, so one more last one. Okay. How do you protect your back when quilting? I'm assuming that's your back, not the back of the quilt. Oh, my back. <laughs> so this is really important. So if you can, um, my machine is adjustable, the height 
of it. Um, I have a hydraulic lift and I highly recommend that you in, invest in something or make sure that you have your um, machine set up so that you are always comfortable. The most where I feel it is in my shoulders and my neck. Sometimes if I'm doing a lot of intense quilting around it, I'll start to feel it and, and I'm working long hours. When I'm doing something, I'm doing it 1000% and that's all I'm doing. So it's not when Scott said he's waking up in the morning and going to work and I'm going to bed. I if, I, if I'm trying to finish something or I'm working on a section, I will work into the wee hours. It's quiet, I listen to audiobook, and I'm not tired, I'm, I wanna work on it. So um, that is partially true <laughs> when he said that. Um, so I will adjust my quilt, my, my machine, I'll, I'll raise it um, for when I'm working on a lot of that micro work and stuff and I wanna be close to it and then I kinda lower it when I'm working on my ruler work. So it, it, it takes kind of the uh, stress off. I have a, I have um, a rug with a pad also underneath me, um, just like a night a cute. I think rug. what helps you too is you take a walk. Like yes. you you don't like I tend to be like, no, I need to finish this. I I don't do my what yes. I should do. Where you are really good. I at mentally taking a walk. yes. I mentally take my dog. The one problem with our, what we do is we're alone in our thoughts all the time. That's not always a good thing. Trust me. Um, and so I walk my dog too, and I might work out. Um, I always talk about that, that my, my workouts save me mentally. <laughs> like, so I, you know, jump on, I'm, I'm like a Peloton evangelist. They should be paying me right now. Send me a sponsorship for how much I talk about them, but I love my Peloton. We have the bike and the tread. I am constantly, I will jump on a class when I need it and really leave it all out there race whomever I'm with. Um, <laughs> Scott can hear me swearing. They're all cheaters. <laughs> They're all cheaters. So I'm on that and I'm, you know, I'm always trying to finish in the top 20% or less on it, <laughs> whatever. But that saves me. So that probably helps um, too. Probably taking care of yourself. Taking care of yourself, lifting weights, you making sure you're drinking water. Anything like that? I don't. Yeah, um, I do. That's what I, I don't. Do I probably myself. should. Um, probably working out and walking my dog. Um, just real quick, I want to just I was telling uh, Lisa about my neighbor, about the secret to living a long, oh, yeah. a long, healthy life. So we had a neighbor across the street from us. She moved her, the house was sold. She moved again because the house was sold. And so I ran into her um, in September on the other side of town, walking in the road, uh, walking her dog in the road. I'm walking my dog in the road because there isn't sidewalks in that part of town. And so I'm talking to her and she's like, oh, she had moved into the senior um, apartments. And I was like, Betty, I was like, oh, I miss seeing you. And, and um, I was like, can I ask you how old you are? I've been wanting to ask her how old she is. I knew that she was older than me, but, and she um, said, she's like, next month I'll be 95. You guys, she's out in the road walking like I am, not worried about falling over and hurting her. I mean, she is 95. walking, she drives. She has her dog that she takes care of. And I told her, I was like, you are an inspiration. I hope, I just turned 48 in October. So we both had, we're, we're 10 days apart. Her birthday was October 20th, mine was the She's 11th. almost twice your age. Almost twice my age. I have no excuse not to get out and walk my dog. So I said, the moral of the story is, is get out and walk and get yourself a dog, <laughs> people. Because that is amazing. She does not look it. She has all her faculties and she walks out there and she, it's not like she's moving at a snail's pace either. She's not walking at my pace because nobody does according to Scott. Um, yeah, I can't but, walk with you either. Yeah, it's, uh, and, uh, but she, that's awesome. So yeah. I just take care of yourself take mentally, of yourself. mentally, physically. Cause we have lots of quilts to make. Yeah. We have lots of quilts to make. I have a stash that I need to, I always say to Scott, do you think I'll ever get through it? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. Right. <laughs> I have a lot of quilts. I want to quilt. I have a lot of projects. I have a lot of rulers, all the things. So, One question. Yeah. Is there going to be a 2022 quilted pineapple ornament? Yes, there <laughs> is. It's coming out Scott, right? I, he has the ideas. They we do were trying yearly, to have it. We they, do a yearly ornament. Yeah. We try. We were going to try to have it ready to get here, but I just uh, pushed Scott to the limit. All right, so you girls that. need to come up with two winners for me. Yeah, two uh, winners because okay, we're giving away. Okay, let me away. do a couple announcements quick. So wasn't that awesome? Um, Linda's, if you can come here, take a class from her, mm -hmm. we'll let you know as mm -hmm. soon as we know when the next set of classes will be. 
but we really appreciate you taking time out to come today. I apologize. I never announced it on any of my social media or posted it because well, her, they sold out so they quick. They sold out, yeah. They sold out. I went to go post something else. Jess is telling me we're going to open up two more classes. I was going to post something. She's like, yeah, they sold out. We filled your classes. Yeah. So I was so, like, awesome. Yeah, and we are interrupting their class right now. So we're so trying. We're, yeah, we're going to start back. My students are all waiting for yes. me to finish. They're so awesome. So like, we, we appreciate the fact that they let us do this in the middle of their class. But um, oh. uh here are your prize winners, so hang on to that. Okay. All right, so here at the gathering, the girls wanted me to remind you of a couple things that we have coming up. Naughty or Nice is our December uh, sew along with me or come stitch with me type thing, like a retreat. And that is December 5th through the 11th. We have a nice number in there already, but we're always looking for more people who wanna hang out and have a lot of fun. So look on our uh, events for Naughty or Nice. You can stay here or you can be a day guest. We offer both of those situations. Mm -hmm. And then we also have our sit and stitch dates I need to announce to people. And those are December 13th, January 10th and 24th, and then February 14th and 28th. I know a lot of people were looking for those dates. And those are uh, times when you come and sit and stitch with us for the whole day. You get lunch for $25 and it we'll help so you with anything. You guys come, it's like Disneyland for quilters here. I yeah. am not joking. The shop, everything, it's amazing. I told her Scott and I could come here and live and live in one of the retreat rooms and they wouldn't even know we were here. <laughs> <laughs> one stop, you can get your yeah. long arm quilting done the and your quilting yeah. is it, yeah. the food is so good, everything. So All right. So and this we'll, quilt is available. Yeah, so right? this is yeah, this also. is also we haven't had it. Now it's ready to be kitted or it's kitted and we're it's ready for sale. And do we have it on our website already? We'll make sure it's up there. But this yeah. is Wildflower Garden, and this is the contemporary version. It's gorgeous. We had a scrappy version, which was green leaves and like all different colors. And then this, for this quilt, I wanted to choose a monochromatic type, you know, only certain colors. This beautiful teal blue, the salmon orange, and then the black with the grays and the cream. So that was the whole color scheme for the whole quilt. So again, we wanna, you know, when you look at this, it's different. It's not, who puts black leaves on their quilt, right? So uh, it was so super fun to do, and I just loved sometimes stepping out of the box and doing something a little bit different. So who are our prize so winners? So our prize winners, the Flex, Leah Henthorn. All right. Good job. Congratulations. Congratulations. And Kathy Adams gets the brand new set of the mid curves. Okay, girls, make sure so you take awesome, care. Yeah. We'll ship them out for you. You don't have to do that. Awesome. Here you go, girls. The top one is the top set. The bottom one is the bottom set. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank we you did have a couple more quilts. Let's show them a couple more quilts. Y'all want to show, show this blue one here and then Outlander. Just to give you a little bit of eye candy to leave you with inspired for the day. What do you need the quilts for? Yeah, and then Linda can uh, get back to her Yeah, class. get back to my class. So thank you, ladies, for letting yes. us interrupt your class. We have two more. We have a whole new group starting coming in t tonight and tomorrow morning. Yes. So, so this is uh, Winter Star. But look Night at the quilting. Star. Night, Star. Night, Star. Night, Star. Night, Star. Night Star. Night Star. Night Star. Night Star. Double bat, 70-30 with 80-20 uh, over it. And I know you all love triangles now after Osei Lots Kenny, of ruler so. work. Yep, lots of ruler work. And the quilting candy. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Nick. You're out. Good thing these guys aren't shy, right? Yeah. We're going to come on. We're, we should go to yeah. their fishing and their yeah, boat and start doing He's, videos yeah, on their boat. On, on um, quilting. No. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be very family friendly. All right. Yeah. This one here, Outlander Star. Beautiful. No feathers. That's an unusual thing for me not to put some feathers on, but lots of ruler work, curves, and straight edge. Um, designs on it and Scott Hershka actually Scott my husband made the ruler for Lisa to make this for these yeah yep. to make the to those diamonds that. Yep. yep two sizes awesome. we have them in all right I think so that's that it, it for today yep. thanks guys thank for helping. you thank you so much everyone Hope all right you tuned in. have a great day everyone yes. and make sure you go do some stitching Happy